Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel, and I'm answering now question number 11 from the um, January 2018 C4, C34 paper. And this is a question on parametric equations. And this is a topic which is in P4, uh, the new P4 syllabus. So I'll be filing this under my P4 playlists. Um, now, this question here is about this curve, which is kind of a strange looking type of curve, which normally you get when you have a parametric equation. So this curve is defined by the parametric equations x equals 3 cosine t, y equals 9 sine 2t for values of t between 0 and 2 pi inclusive. Now, a parametric equation is basically an equation which is defined or written down with three parameters x, y, and the third parameter is t. That's why it's called parametric. There's like three parameters, three variables. And in this question, um, the curve C meets the x-axis at the origin at the points A and B as shown in figure 3. Write down the coordinates of A and B. Okay, so we've got to find the coordinates of A and B. Okay, and basically... Um, the values of a and b are on the x-axis. Now, on the x-axis, okay, y is equal to zero. Okay, on the x-axis, y is equal to zero. Um, basically, we can see that that's like the the extreme value of on the x on the x side and on on, on on the negative and the positive side for x. I mean, we can see that we can we can actually answer this question without really. Um, having to do much calculation because it's like the the minimum value of x is a and the maximum value of x is b okay there's no value that's less than a and no value that's more than b so we could quite easily just say okay uh, you know the maximum value of x is going to be 3 and the minimum value is going to be minus 3 because uh, you know you can say cosine of t okay is between its value will be between minus one and one that will never go higher than one and never get lower than minus one because that's the way the cosine curve looks in general that's how the cosine curve looks let me just be a bit neater than that okay so you have um the cosine curve looks something like this okay between zero and two pi well in fact, the whole way across it will never go bigger than 1 or less than minus 1. Okay, so the maximum is, is 1 and the, the minimum is minus 1. So that means for 3 cosine t, if you have 3 times a cosine t, then the maximum it can be is 3 and the minimum it can be is negative 3. So we could say, therefore, that the coordinates of a is going to be, which one is a? A is the one to the left, so it's going to be negative 3, 0. And the coordinates of B, therefore, are going to be positive 3 and 0. B is over here on the positive side. Okay, so that's that's enough. You don't really have to show any steps for that or find any values of T or anything like that because this question is pretty much a, um, a simple type of question. Oh, and that's why it says write down the values of. It doesn't require any real calculations. You can see from the curve that this is the minimum value of x, a is the lowest it can be, and b is the highest it can be for the x. And we can see from this, the lowest value of this can ever be is minus 3, and the highest that can be is, is 3. So that's a way to solve this, this equation here. Okay, then it says part b, find the values of t at which the cu curve passes through the origin. So the curve passes the origin when x equals 0 and y equals 0. Okay, so let's see. Uh, for x equals 0, we've got 3 cosine t. 3 cosine t equals 0. So cosine t is equal to 0. So inverse uh, cosine of 0 in radians gives us um, pi over 2. And in the range we have between 0 and 2 pi, there's another place which is 3 pi over 2. I mean, basically, if you take your calculator and you put inverse cosine, uh, and make sure it's in radian mode. So, oops, what am I doing? Change it to radian mode. Um, so, angle unit two radians. So, inverse cosine of zero. We should know this anyway by by this stage. But just in case you're not sure, that's pi over two. And for the cosine curve, the other place which shares the same cosine ratio 
um, is 2 pi minus this. So it's going to be 2 pi minus this answer. So 2 pi minus this answer, that gives us 3 pi over 2. So those are the two places in our range where the cosine curve equals 0. Okay, now, um, so that's where x equals 0. So we have to make sure that y also equals 0 at those two places. So we know that um, the y this this for y we had what was it y equals nine sine two t nine sine times two t so when t is equal to pi over two we'll make sure that y is also zero that's nine times the sine of two times the pi over two uh, two times pi over two is pi okay which gives us sine pi is zero so that's going to be zero so that's okay so that's one value and when t is equal to 3 pi over 2 you have y equals 9 times sine of if you multiply that by 2 you're going to get 3 pi and the sine of 3 pi is also 0 okay we can we can tell from the sine curve because the sine curve looks like this it goes through uh, at 0 at pi at 2 pi okay um so yeah even at uh, hold on yeah so when t equals 3 pi over 2 this will also give us the value that we need because this is sine 2t that's why it's basically increased the the, the angles we're going to catch for this are going to go all the way up to 4 pi basically okay so we're also including here 3 pi and 4 pi Okay, so we got 3 pi here. So 9 sine 3 pi over 2 does give us 0. So the values that we need for t are these two. t equals pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. When you, when you substitute t equals pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 in both these equations for x and y, you will get 0. So it passes through the origin at these two places. Okay, so those are the values of t for which the curve passes through the origin. That's A and B done. All right, now let's go to question part C. It says, find an expression for dy dx in terms of t and hence find the gradient of the curve when t equals pi over 6. So now we have to differentiate this expression. Okay, so we want to find dy dx. We don't have y in terms of x. And, um, you know, it's easier to differentiate this by dealing with them separately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, this is the same as saying dy dt multiplied by dt dx. Okay, so we've got to find dy dt. Now, if you differentiate y with respect to t, you have um, so something inside the function which is 2t. So differentiating 9 sine of something will give us 9 times the cosine of something. So we 9 times the cosine of 2t, but we have to multiply by the differential of what's inside here because of the chain rule. So this is going to be multiplying this by 2. So you'll have to multiply this by 2. So you end up with 18 cosine 2t. So that's dy dt. And dx dt, we can find dx dt, is going to be basically minus 3 sine t. Okay, so now... Okay, so now we have to uh, find dy dx. So dy dx is going to be dy dt, which is 18 cosine of 2t, times dt dx, which is the reciprocal of this. So it's basically, you have to divide it by this. So you're going to put over minus 3 sine 2t. 3 sine t okay so now we have uh, 18 divided by minus 3 is minus 6 so dy dx is going to be minus 6 times cosine of 2t over sine of t so that's part of this question answered it says find an expression for dy dx in terms of t and hence find the gradient of the curve when t equals pi over 6 so now we've got to put in t equals pi over 6 and find the value of this gradient so when t equals pi over 6 you got dy dx is equal to minus 6 times cosine of, now the cosine of pi over 6, well, no, sorry, the, the 2 times pi over 6 is going to be pi over 3. That's going to be cosine of pi over 3, which is cosine of 60, which is a half, over sine of pi over 6, which is a sine of 30, which is also a half. So basically, you end up with minus 6 times a half divided by a half. So you'll end up here with... Um, dy dx is equal to minus 6 multiplied by a half divided also by a half the halves cancel and you're left with minus 6 so there's the answer for part 
um, C. Okay, so there's part C of this question done. We found the gradient by finding dy dx. To find dy dx, we use the chain rule. We do dy dt times dt dx. So we can find dy dt easily. We can find dt d, dx dt easily. And dy, dt, dy dx is going to be uh, dy dt multiplied by dt dx, which is like dividing by um, you know, dx dt, basically. All right, so there we have the answer for that question. Now we're going to go on to the last part of this question. It says, show that the Cartesian equation of the curve can be written in this form, y squared equals a squared times b minus x squared. Um, where a and b are integers to determine. So the Cartesian equation is the equation which, as you can see, where you don't have the third parameter. It's just in terms of y and in terms of x, not in terms of anything else. Okay, so we have to get rid of this parameter of t. And uh, when you've got these trig type of param parametric equations, the easiest way to do them is to use some trig identities. So what I always try to do is I try to make, um, like, if I can, sine t, like cosine t the subject. So let's start with that. So I'm going to, I can see that cosine t is going to be x over 3. So I can say cosine of t is equal to x over 3. I'm trying to make cosine t the subject and also sine t the subject. Uh, and then I can link them together with uh, identity, sine squared t plus cosine squared t is equal to 1. So for sine 2t, this is a double angle. So what I can do is I can say, okay, y is equal to 9 times sine of t times, sorry, 9 times, 9 times 2 sine t cosine t. Because we know that there's a formula or there's identity sine 2a is equal to 2 sine a cosine a. That's one of the identities that we know, double angle formula. So we can say that 9 sine 2t is equal to basically 18 sine t cosine t. All right, now I know that cosine t is equal to x over 3, so I can get rid of that, that part of it. So I can say y is equal to 18 times sine t times x over 3. And I can now, the 3 will cancel with 18, give you 6. I can now make the sine t the subject of this formula. So I can say y over 6x is equal to sine t. So now I have sine t is equal to y over 6x. Now what I can do is I can link them together using my identity. I know that the sine squared of an angle, so sine squared of t plus the cosine squared of the same angle is equal to 1. So sine squared t means sine t all squared. So I can square this y over 6x. So I have y over 6x all squared plus, and I can square the cosine t, which is x over 3. So that's x over 3 all squared. Don't forget to square all of it. And that's equal to 1. Now I've got rid of the t. Now all I have to do is write it in the form that they want. And a and b have to be some integers that come out of this. So let's now just square these brackets. So you've got y squared over 36x squared plus x squared over 9 is equal to 1. If I want to get rid of the fractions from this, if I multiply both sides of this equation by 36x squared, it's like the LCM of the denominators. Well, the 36x squared will cancel from here, so you're left with y squared plus and if i divide if i multiply this by 36x squared i've got 4x squared so that will give, that's going to give me uh, 4 that's going to give me 4x to the power 4 equals and this will be 36x squared so now i can um, remember one way what they want y squared to be the subject yes so i'm going to put y squared equals uh, 36x squared minus 4x to the power 4 so how do they want it? Also, they want it to be in the form where I have got a factor taken out, a common factor of something x squared. Okay, I can do that here. I can see the common factor here is 4x squared. 4x squared, yes, so I have y squared equals you've got 4x squared, and then you're going to have 9, 4 9s are 36, x, no, 9, just 9, not x. It's just going to be 9, because it's already taken out the x squared, minus, and that will be just x to the power of 2, that will give me 36x x squared minus 4x to the power 4, and that's my answer. So there's the answer. The integers we can see, we've got a and b. Um, integers, they worked out to be integers a and b. So we can see here that our a is 4, 
and our b is 9 okay so there, there's the answer for this question you just have to leave it in this form actually you don't have to write the value of a and b it says put it in this form but it's more complete if you do write it we see that they're both integers so we can be assured that we you know we can quite be you know uh, rest assured that we're probably on the right tracks because uh, uh, a and b did turn out to be integers as as required here okay so there we have the answer for 11 part d and that completes this question on parametric equations um if you want to see other videos on uh papers from this or questions from this particular paper as I answer them, they will be added to the playlist that should appear in this region here. Uh, other questions from P4 parametric equations, I'll put in the, in the playlist that you should find in this area over here. Um, you can see another P4 paper that you might be interested in, in the card that appears on the top. And you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already by clicking on the icon, icon which will appear at the end of the video. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.